We've been talking about it a lot, but I think when it comes to POTS, you have to pay attention to whether or not people are having blood vessels that are mechanically compressed. I think to not look at that is a huge mistake because we see tons of people that have compressions in subclavian arteries, right? If my shoulders are rolled way forward like this, you may notice that your hands go numb or that your hands are weak or tingly along the insides here. Push in here and it's really tender. It's hard to hold your hands up. Those are really good signals that you're creating a compression of the blood vessels. It's hard bone on soft vessel. It's not that complicated. So if we're noticing those, we obviously have to do something about it or we're gonna have changes in our cardiac output to try to compensate for the fact that we're changing blood flow in that system. The same can be said for compressions that are happening in the posterior circulation in the back of the neck or in the carotid system coming up as we're trying to navigate through the bones in our neck. So people that have whiplash injuries, people that have sports injuries, getting hit into the boards playing hockey. These are literally three cases we saw today, by the way. These can all yield changes in the way that we send blood to the brain. And when we're trying to help people resolve problems with the brain to use neuro rehab to the best of its ability, we have to make sure that we can feed it. We have to make sure that blood can flow there unobstructed if we wanna see it heal. So if we do see the obstructions, we tend to see the ones that are most impactful to brain are gonna be kind of in the subclavian arteries, in the carotid arteries, in the vertebral arteries. And we're gonna see that they're gonna be the ones that are also gonna be likely to change the output of your heart, to cause the tachycardia to try to compensate them. That's a place to start. It's not all of them, but it'll be a good start.